Oh, you know what that means. Uh, just a green M&M. <laughs> yeah, but you know what green M&Ms mean. <laughs> wink, wink. D did you just say wink, wink? Are, are you reading the stage directions or something? Look, the green M&Ms mean that... <laughs> What? Hello, Internet! Welcome to Food Theory, the show that's a perfect 10, but actually thinks plain M&Ms are best M&Ms. One year ago, we took a look at the lore of M&Ms to prove that these cute, crunchy spokes candies were actually cannibals. But today, we're doing something a little bit different. We're looking at the M&Ms themselves to confirm or deny a rumor that's been circling around them for decades. Do green M&Ms make you whole? <laughs> this is gonna be tough to say without getting demonetized. Something tells me I'm not getting the Markiplier treatment on this one, friends. Do green Green M&Ms make you more likely to have some delicious uh, sweet candies in your mouth. Uh, let's go the scientific route. Everything is less sexy when you describe it scientifically. Do green M&Ms actually put you into a state of heightened arousal where you'll be more likely to procreate with your fellow human beings? Yeah, baby! TLDR, looks like I'm gonna have to brush up on my YouTube safe euphemisms for this episode, friends. Yeah, in case you haven't heard this one, people have been convinced for years that green M&Ms actually make you feel, uh, let me pull out the thesaurus, goatish. Goatish? Really, Miriam Webster? Uh, yeah, yeah, apparently that is a real thing. Feel free to put that one on your next Valentine's Day card. Baby, you make me feel goatish. Anyway, as the urban legend goes, green M&Ms put you in the mood for love. As to where those rumors began, no one really knows. There are three theories, three food theories as to why it happened. One, that it has to do with the color's relation to nature and fertility. Two, that it has to do with the color's rarity, since in the early days, green m M&Ms only tended to be 10% of the candy in there. But of course, my personal favorite is theory number three, that it all started with this commercial. Your batting average is totally awesome. What's your secret? m and M. I I had singles when I ate the brown ones, doubles with the yellows, orange triples. And with the green ones, I take the ball downtown. Magnificent! You're up. Quick, give me a green one. Only one homer left. That's for me. Here's a triple. A few things to unpack here. First off, that kid is a stone-cold liar. In the close-up shot of his hand, we actually see him pour out three green M&Ms, and we never actually see him eat a single one. So for him to suddenly say that he only has one left is a bald-faced lie, and he is therefore hoarding all the homers to himself. Way to not be a team player there, bud. But more to the point, in case you've never had the misfortune of being an American high schooler, kids tend to relate physical milestones of a relationship to the bases in baseball. Kissing is usually first base, and getting a home run is going all the way, if you know what I mean. In the commercial, green M&Ms equal home runs, so by the transitive property of equality, you get the point. Also, let me know down in the comments, I'm just curious, if you don't really have baseball in your local culture, do you have something else like this? Like, for all of Europe, you guys don't really play baseball, is there a football equivalent to the bases metaphor, or no? Are we in America just gross and weird? Anyway, whatever the reason, it was enough to go down in pop culture history as a thing people just say without really understanding. Green M&Ms! Nature's Viagra! The green ones make me horny! And as word of the green M&M's magical properties spread, Mars continued to stay quiet. They did nothing to capitalize off the rumors that were circulating. That was until chocolatier Wendy Jaffe decided to cash in by releasing a duplicate candy of just little green chocolates that she called the green ones. And that is when Mars decided to step in. They weren't about to let anyone share their spotlight, so they took legal action. They won the suit and immediately started to lean in hard. They released all green M&M packs for Valentine's Day. You are the ultimate aphrodisiac. If you don't know, I suggest you run out and get yourself a pack of limited edition green M&Ms. Confidence is key. No one works it like you. They launched ad campaigns titled, What Is It About The Green Ones? It's coming down. I just don't like it. He's a boy. That's what boys do. And of course, most infamously, they made the green spokes candy the sexy one. She even got herself a Sports Illustrated photo shoot back in 2011. That was until the Me Too movement prompted Mars to give her a more inclusive redesign and replace her signature go-go boots with a pair of sensible sneakers. Ugh, ugly sneakers too. At least the go-go boots were fun. You could have at least given her a pair of Yeezys. Anyway, it's here that I step in. Sure, the internet's fine tossing around the rumors and making jokes about the history of the urban legend, but where has science stepped in? Where are my double-blind grant support 
reported studies looking at the really important issues like this. Nowhere. Until today, that is. That's right. Today, I plan to look into the rumors and prove definitively, once and for all, whether the green M&Ms actually have some kind of seductive power. Does eating a bowl full of green M&Ms actually make you feel frisky or just fat? Or maybe, just maybe, there's another secret weapon that's hidden somewhere inside that bag. Let's begin. Before doing the actual experiment, I first wanted to research whether the sight of certain colors on M&Ms or otherwise could have weird physical effects on our body. And the answer to that appears to be yes. According to an article from the University of Melbourne published in 2018, different temperatures of light target the autonomic nervous system, which helps to regulate involuntary processes such as heart rate and blood pressure, things that are going to play a role in your overall state of arousal. In the test, lights from higher color temperatures tended to result in higher levels of arousal. Also, I've said the word a bunch of times, so let me be perfectly clear here. The scientific definition of arousal means physical and mental alertness and activation. This test wasn't showing that you're going to suddenly collapse into a fit of ecstasy every time you walk into a room with a fluorescent lamp, but their test was only focused on colors of light. What about just color colors? Another study exposed male students to the four primary colors, red, blue, green, and yellow. The researchers then looked at electrical skin conductance and heart rate as a way of measuring the participants' arousal. And while none of the colors managed to raise the heart rate, green actually made their skin clammier than both blue and yellow, indicating higher levels of excitement. So there certainly seems to be some evidence to suggest that green is arousing, except you'll notice that there was one color that I left out, red. While green was slightly arousing, red resulted in a significant elevation in arousal rates over all the others. And this isn't just a one-off result either, it's actually something that science has shown time and time again. In a 2012 test specifically looking at red versus blue stimuli, red was once again found to be the most exciting. And in yet another survey of green versus red, red once again came out on top. Overall, there definitely appears to be a color hierarchy. Green is more exciting than blue, but nothing compares to red. And this makes sense psychologically, right? Blue is the color of calm, the ocean, sleep. Blue is often used to represent intelligence and professionalism, which is why it's the color that's favored by most banks. Green is a bit more active, but it's calm. You think of peaceful grass and trees, fields. Green is used to communicate freshness and health, which explains why it's plastered across most grocery brands. Meanwhile, red is the color of love, passion. When you're angry, you see red. It's the color of extreme emotions, heightened arousal. In short, science tends to suggest that colors with longer wavelengths tend to be more stimulating than those with shorter wavelengths. So if red is so arousing and associated with love, then why are green M&Ms the ones that are getting all the glory? Why aren't red M&Ms getting their piece of the action? Well, in 1976, that's exactly what happened. A Russian scientist claimed to have found proof that FD&C red dye number two could cause cancer. As a result, the FDA scrambled to ban the dye's use in all food products, which resulted in Mars pulling red M&Ms from their lineup for over a decade. Ironically enough, the red M&Ms didn't actually use that specific dye. They were just worried about the public backlash against any sort of red food. But regardless of the reason, the move actually had two consequences. First, it gave rise to orange M&Ms, which replaced red in the package and has ever since been depicted as though he's witnessing a murder. But secondly, it started yet another lesser known rumor that the red M&Ms were disappearing because they were such powerful aphrodisiacs, Mars employees were taking them off production lines to save them for themselves. Unlike the rumors with green though, Mars has clearly not embraced this one considering that the red spokes candy's human form looks like Danny DeVito on a bender. Look at me! I'm human! Do you want to eat me? No. Do you want to eat me? No thanks. No? Would you like to eat me? <laughs> Nobody wants to eat me! I'm the luckiest! <laughs> Nothing says eat my candy quite like the Lorax getting front-ended by a garbage truck. But with that, I think we have all our parameters set for testing. First, the question that we initially started with. Do green M&Ms actually affect your libido? Is there something in either the look or ingredients of the green coloring that are going to make you feel more amorous? Question two, are the green M&Ms actually stealing the spotlight from the real secret weapon in the bag, red M&Ms? Or maybe there's always possibility number three. Maybe there's nothing special about either of them and the whole thing is just a bunch of wacky urban legends with zero scientific backing. Spoiler alert, it's probably gonna be that one. To test it all out, I gathered up 40 people, split them across four groups, and had them play a rousing game of hot or not. Cause here at Food Theory, we only accept the most professional approaches to science. Participants in each group were brought into a room and shown a collection of 20 test photos. They were then asked to rate the hotness of each one on a scale of one to 10. The photos were drawn from a stock image website and meant to be a neutral sample of typical individuals. Type of photos that you'd see on a dating website or social media profile. 
Next to the computer was a bowl of candy, and this is where our variables came in. The four groups consisted of a green group where the bowl was full of green M&Ms, a red group where the bowl was full of red M&Ms, a mixed group where the bowl was just full of an unaltered mix of M&M colors, and a control group where there was just no bowl of candy at all. For the test, we didn't do anything fancy like measure skin conductance or heartbeat, we just measured their overall rankings of the photos. Were people that were presented with the green or red chocolates more likely to rate the photos they were viewing as hot, thereby implying that something about the candy was making them more lustful? We were about to find out. But first, do you see that red button down there? Does it make you feel some sort of emotion deep down inside? It's red after all. And hey, if you click it to subscribe to the channel, one day we might bring you into a room full of candy, sit you in front of a computer and ask you to rate the visual attractiveness of random strangers. I mean, if that's not a reason to subscribe, it's probably a reason to call the cops. Luckily, I'm a friendly YouTuber and things like that are my job and not sketchy in the slightest. Click it for the science. Okay, so after crunching the numbers from our test, we learned one important lesson. Eye contact makes you hot. Yeah, we'll, we'll get to the M&M results here in a minute, but first I wanted to call it this really interesting trend with overall hotness rankings. Of all the photos, just by coincidence, one didn't have the person looking at the camera, and that one was, by far, ranked as the least hot. So pay attention all you online daters, be confident, look at the camera, make that parasocial relationship work for you. Take it from me, a PNG tuber who uses a cutout image of myself from 10 years ago to do all the talking for me. Also, in case you were wondering, this was the overall hottest picture with an average ranking of 7.4. Now let's talk about the M&M, shall we? Because believe it or not, the candy did seem to make a difference, but not in the way that you might expect. First, we were able to confirm something about our research on color theory that we talked about earlier. Red does appear to be more stimulating than green. The average ratings for the green stimulus group was 6.24 compared to the average rating of 6.48 for the red M&M group. But while red ranked higher than green, both ranked lower than the no candy group at 6.84. Was it a big difference? No. Would it have been ideal to have had more participants? Absolutely. But you know, I can only accost so many strangers on the street with promises of chocolate and hot photos before they put me on yet another watch list. In short, our initial experiment here not only confirmed that green isn't your lucky color when it comes to getting lucky, but it also disproved that red is going to be doing you special favors. However, while red and green weren't able to get the job done alone, the mixed M&Ms gave us a completely different story. When presented with a bowl of mixed M&Ms, the overall hotness ratings were, on average, a full point higher. It wasn't even close, with people in that group dropping all sorts of nines and tens across the board. So what's that tell us? Honestly, I'm not really sure. My hypothesis, my food hypothesis, would be that it's not the color of the candy that matters, but rather the presence of the candy in the first place. Having chocolate around is just gonna boost your mood. The sugar is gonna shoot dopamine through your brain, which is gonna make you happier, and more likely to think that the people around you are attractive. But then if candy is making the difference here, why would a bowl of all green or all red chocolates not have the same effect? Again, my guess would be because it's distracting or unsatisfying. It feels uncomfortable to get a bowl of M&Ms that are all just the same color. I know I'd be suspicious of those candies in a way that I'm not of a mixed bowl of colorful M&Ms. That said, it's just me trying to explain the results that we got, but it'd need more testing to prove one way or the other. A test that I actually would like to run at some point. I know that I just joked about this before, but seriously, if you'd like to participate in one of these wacky studies sometime in the future, hit the subscribe button. We're currently working to figure out ways to include you as part of the testing process process for episodes like this, because let's be honest, while 40 participants is fine, 40,000 participants is a data set that'll make science weep. So if you want to be around for the next time I start sending random candies to people in the mail, hit that subscribe button. Now if you'll excuse me, I need to go eat some Skittles. I hear the purple ones make you smarter. But hey, that's just a theory. A food theory. Bon appetit. <laughs>